This right here is an absolutely gorgeous blue faced darner named for that beautiful blue face, that bright blue face. Very distinctive feature of adults. Now this is a nice looking male. You can see that those nice cerci and that paraproc right there. It's a pretty fresh looking one too. It's some bright green colors, bright blue face, and perfectly intact wings. Just a beautiful blue faced armor. Ah, check this out. The reason they call these guys Odonata is because they have tooth-like structures at, on their mouth. And these ridged structures in their mouth make for a pretty painful bite. Now most of the time, with smaller sized dragonflies, they don't even try to bite, and when they do, it doesn't even hurt. But darners are so huge that if you put one to bite you, it will bite and it will hurt. As you can see, it took some skin off with that bite. Not too bad of pain. I've never had blood drawn from a darner bite. However, it is pretty painful as it's happening. Just something interesting, I'd point out. Just some scary looking mouth parts right there. But a beautiful species, and one that won't harm you unless you make it like I did. These guys, when you catch them, make sure to hold them either by the wings or like I'm doing right now, by the thorax. Because they won't be able to bite you like that. And these guys, dragonflies in general, will not go after you and try to bite you. You have to do like I did to try and get them to bite. But I was just showing just how powerful those mouth parts are and how big of prey items these guys can take down, especially when they get to the size of this blue-faced thorn right here. So I'm going to let this guy go. This right here is a female blue-faced starner. She's an immature, very, very, very fresh female. Probably just came out a couple days ago. You can tell because her cerci are very long. In darners, the females were born with very large cerci, and you can tell how old they are by how long their cerci are, because by the end they're at maturity, they basically have very short to no cerci. And her face isn't blue, either. A fully matured female blue-faced honor would have not as bright of a blue of a face as the males, but still some blue on the face. So I'm just going to let her go real quick. It's no wonder why this species is called the Great Pond Hawk. Look how absolutely massive it is. Now it might not be as big as some of our huge Dorner species, but it is an absolutely massive species of Pond Hawk, much bigger than the more common Eastern Pond Hawk found all over North America, at least the eastern part of North America. Absolutely incredible species with a very thin abdomen and a distinctive green ring pattern around the abdomen and that bright green coloration overall on the body. Check out this absolute beauty of a damselfly. This is a blue striped spread wing, another increasingly common tropical species we get in South Florida. Now this is one of the largest damselflies in all of Florida right here. The spread wings are huge damselflies. You can see just how large this is, much larger than average for a damselfly. You can't see it by the way it's holding it right now. But when these guys are landed, the reason they're called spread wings is because they perch with their wings open just like dragonflies would. Now the blue striped spread wing male has a very distinctive pattern of a bright blue on the thorax with dark green and a blue stripe on each side of the top of the thorax as well as a singular white or blue ring around the second to last segment. The cerci shape is also pretty distinctive and the paraprocts are very short. So it has those hook shaped cerci and very short paraprocts which are those two little appendages in the middle of the two cerci. Just an extremely distinctive species, at least as a male. Females are a little harder to identify. I'm going to try and find a female and show it to you, but for now we'll have to deal with this absolutely incredible looking, fully matured blue male. This is an evening skimmer, Tholomus citrina. 
This is a tropical species of dragonfly that is found increasingly common in South Florida now, but still a pretty rare species. I've been seeing these guys a lot more lately. They seem to have probably been a vagrant at one point and then started local breeding populations. And now these guys breed all over South and Central Florida. It's a very interesting story. Uh, they have a very distinctive species, despite them being a dull brown color overall. They're still very distinctive. There's nothing else that really has that strange, dull, almost creepy looking dull brown color. But even more distinctive are those orange spots. The really big two orange spots near the notice of the hind wings. Very distinctive species that hangs vertically. I'm going to see if I put this guy here. It'll... Oh, it just took off. They're just flying up there.